quote from Thomas Cogan, former NASA science director, on the launch of JWST. James Webb marks the beginning of a new era in astronomy. Webb will expand and test our cosmology and our understanding of planets and the origin of life. What began hopefully turned into a debacle. James Webb shocked scientists with the crisis. Now, will it get worse or will a new discovery of the James Webb telescope and the debate in physics, the discussions about old theories and who is right or wrong, indeed come to a temporary end? But what exactly does this mean? Have scientists really unraveled the mysteries surrounding James Webb's impossible discoveries? Or are we just being stalled with flimsy explanations? James Webb was supposed to bring solutions, but instead, the $11 billion project plunged cosmology into a major crisis. All parts of natural science associated with space are currently experiencing a shakeup of the kind we last saw in the Middle Ages with the shift to the heliocentric view of the world. Now we may have to recognize that the foundations of our modern physics are also flawed and that we have not come close to understanding what our cosmos really is. But how is this possible? Today's astrophysics, or in other words, the science of the physical quantities and relationships in the cosmos, is based on the basic rules of physics, which essentially go back to researchers of antiquity, the Middle Ages, and in particular to Sir Isaac Newton. The first observations of mechanics and dynamics were made in antiquity. Quantities and forces were described for the first time, and later Newton discovered gravity, which is so important for astrophysics. We built our scientific observation of the universe on these foundations. We transferred the quantities and forces that were valid and observable on Earth to the universe, and this produced some consistent results. But then the space we can see got bigger and bigger, and at a certain point, our known quantities no longer fit to describe what we see. This crisis began with the problem that different methods of measuring the age and expansion rate of the universe led to contradictory results. Local measurements based on astronomical objects within the universe gave different values than measurements of the early universe based on the cosmic microwave background radiation. We know this dissonance as the Hubble voltage, while the Hubble constant indicates the expansion rate of the universe. In the summer of 2022, Webb discovered so many old and highly developed galaxies in space that doubts arose as to how the age of the universe was determined. Our cosmos can hardly be 138 billion years old if thanks to Webb we see galaxies that were already well-developed 200 to 100 million years after the Big Bang. According to the calculations of our physics, galaxies need billions of years to grow. In the case of the galaxies discovered by Webb, this would even mean that the time of their formation was before the Big Bang. Our old cosmology, according to which the universe began with a Big Bang 138 billion years ago, has been expanding ever since and has undergone a slow process of evolution of matter, cannot be correct. We are at a crossroads. Either we are making a mistake if we think that our earthly physics can be applied to the entire universe, or we have so far only deciphered a small part of the physics that really exists. The ancient scholar Hermes Trismegistus once said, As in small things, so in great things. According to this maxim, all the physics that exists in the cosmos should also be found on Earth, but perhaps we have overlooked forces and dimensions on our own planet that we are now noticing in the COS. Webb breaks all records. It's fantastic. This telescope can pick up extremely weak light signals. Webb's 18 honeycomb-shaped mirrors effortlessly detect light that has traveled through space and time for more than 13 billion years. A special exposure method makes these faint traces of light visible for the first time. Thanks to the new revolutionary technology, we saw the light from the most distant galaxies that formed shortly after the Big Bang for the first time in the summer of 2022. These G galaxies were a sensation and at the same time a bit of disappointment. Instead of baby galaxies, Webb shows perfectly developed galaxies that appear to be several billion years old. But with an age of 135 or 136 billion years, this can never be the case. These days, scientists sometimes say that the objects and the images are impossible or not real. But Webb can only show us the truth. Science must now admit that it has probably been on the wrong track for more than a century. That's roughly how old our standard cosmological model is. What we see here is real. Webb works perfectly. It's just that large parts of our science are still unable to come to terms with the new truths. Some of the old traditionalists who don't want to look at the new truths in the face vehemently oppose the end of the Big Bang or the idea of expansion. 
In the Middle Ages, it also took many years before the Church was finally willing to admit that the Earth was not the center of the universe, even though there was suddenly masses of evidence from astronomers all over Europe. So not much seems to have changed. And although we consider ourselves much more modern today, we have a similar scenario. Researchers who proclaim something new may no longer end up in prison like Galileo Galilei, but the quarrels between researchers and the hostility towards new things are still there. Imagine you have spent a lifetime researching and firmly believing in something, and then suddenly you see images or another side of reality that tells a different story. Perhaps your mind would also rebel against this at first, and it would take a while before you could accept the new truth. As everywhere, there are some who are quicker to adapt and others who take longer. Many open-minded and young scientists are enthusiastic about Webb's discoveries. Rohan Natu, the discoverer of the Glass Z11 galaxy, and Steffi Lin, who discovered Macy's galaxy, belong to this open-minded generation of researchers. They look at Webb's images with an open mind and have been studying them since the first moment of publication. Both astronomers emphasize several times in interviews that we simply cannot not know what will happen in astrophysics. At this moment, we have to wait for further measurement results, studies, and of course Webb's latest images. Was it Hubble's fault? Let's take a look at the debacle. One of the great debates in modern cosmology concerns the Hubble constant. This is the rate at which the universe is supposedly expanding. In the 1920s, astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that distant galaxies were moving away from us. From this, he concluded that the universe is expanding. The idea was later expanded upon, and the Belgian astronomer Georges Lemaitre postulated that this expansion originated from a single point, the Big Bang. Today, we already know from alternative methods that the movement of galaxies can also be explained differently, and these approaches also provide a coherent picture in their entirety. However, they were ignored for a long time because the old theories were considered more probable. But the more we see of the universe, the more discrepancies emerge. This didn't just start with Webb. Even 20 years ago, there were regions in space where the expansion was behaving differently. It was as if these regions were sometimes faster and sometimes slower, or perhaps denser or emptier. This led to speculation that there may have been several starting points or that our universe is even permanently fed by several sources, which do not necessarily all have to have had a beginning at the same time or at all. Alternative ideas about the shape, nature, and age of the universe emerged once again, but researchers continued to cling to the old theories of the Big Bang and an expansion. This was possibly a mistake. We have already briefly learned about the Hubble tension. In short, it shows clear differences in distance measurements in the universe depending on which fixed points we use as measurement constants. Now scientists hope that the Webb telescope, as its mission progresses, will be able to resolve this tension by making precise measurements of the distances and redshifts of galaxies. This could correct errors in previous measurement methods and pave the way to new advanced physics. In the end, all researchers have done their best in finding explanations and theories, and they have advanced humanity's knowledge of the cosmos. We should therefore not discuss guilt but rather look ahead and rejoice in every new discovery, even if it seems unfamiliar or even shocking at first. New theories and alternative explanations are on the rise. We are probably at the exciting beginning of a new science. New investigation of these oldest points of light could show us whether they are akin disks or jets of supermassive black holes and is in their vicinity. We would then have to revisit our cosmology and find out whether black holes played a much more important role in the discovery of the universe than previously thought. One theory that points to this comes from the British scientist Roger Penrose, who believes that the universe is constantly recreating itself in cycles and that black holes could somehow survive such transitions as gigantic stores of information. Penrose published this theory long before Webb was launched, but although the Briton is a renowned researcher, his work was not accepted. That is now changing. Webb's mission has only just begun. We already have a second deep image, and we have the discovery of a very old structure that is so large that it also does not fit into the young universe. This evidence is growing. We still have to wait and see what new images from Webb will reveal. The telescope is not only exploring the young cosmos, but is also working around the clock to complete our knowledge of exoplanets, discover new worlds, shine a new light on our own solar system, and image the most massive and beautiful structures in the cosmos in unprecedented detail. 
Each of these observations in the universe is ultimately a piece of the puzzle that completes the overall picture. Even measurement data on exoplanets can broaden our focus on the overall picture and provide us with important clues about unknown forces, anomalies, or previously unknown phenomena. There must be something like a basic matrix, and our scientists are looking for its sizes, numbers, and structures. A quote from Adams, former NASA lead scientist, on the launch of JWST. The James Webb Space Telescope heralds a transformative epoch in our comprehension of the cosmos. It promises to push the boundaries of our knowledge about the universe, planets, and the origins of life itself. What started with high hopes turned into a significant controversy. The unexpected findings from James Webb have stunned the scientific community. Will this upheaval worsen? Or will new discoveries and debates in physics finally find resolution? But what does this really entail? Have scientists genuinely solved the enigmas posed by James Webb's astonishing revelations? Or are we being placated with inadequate explanations initially intended to provide clarity? The $11 billion project has instead plunged cosmology into turmoil. Every branch of space-related natural science is undergoing a seismic shift comparable to the paradigm change from geocentrism to heliocentrism in the Middle Ages. We might have to acknowledge that the foundations of modern physics are flawed and that our understanding of the cosmos is far from complete. But how did this happen? Today's astrophysics, the study of the physical properties and interactions in the universe, is grounded in principles dating back to ancient researches, the Middle Ages, and prominently to Sir Isaac Newton. Ancient observations introduced the first concepts of mechanics and dynamics, with Newton later defining gravity, which is crucial for astrophysics. These principles have underpinned our scientific observation of the universe. We extrapolated Earth's valid and observable quantities and forces to the cosmos, yielding consistent results. However, as our observable universe expanded, these known quantities no longer suffice to describe what we were seeing. This crisis began with the inconsistent results from different methods of measuring the universe's age and expansion rate. Local measurements based on astronomical objects conflicted with those of the early universe derived from cosmic microwave background radiation. This discrepancy is known as the Hubble tension, the Hubble constant indicating the universe's expansion rate, was called into question in the summer of 2022 when Webb discovered numerous ancient, highly developed galaxies. These findings cast out on the universe's age. The cosmos, supposedly 138 billion years old, cannot host well-developed galaxies merely 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. Our physics suggests galaxies take billions of years to form. Webb's discoveries imply some galaxies existing before the Big Bang, challenging the traditional cosmology which posits a 138-billion-year-old universe expanding since a single inception point. We face a pivotal moment. Either we are in applying earthly physics universally, or we have only begun to uncover the true physics at play. The ancient scholar Hermes Trismegistus is adage, as above, so below, suggests cosmic physics should mirror earthly physics. Perhaps we have missed forces and dimensions on Earth that are now apparent in the cosmos. Webb's unprecedented capabilities are astounding. Its 18 hexagonal mirrors detect extremely faint light signals, capturing light that has traversed space and time for over 13 billion years. Innovative exposure methods render these faint traces visible for the first time. This revolutionary technology unveiled light from the most distant galaxies formed shortly after the Big Bang in mid-2022. These galaxies, far from Nent, appear fully developed and several billion years old in age. That is incongruous with a 135 to 136 billion year old universe. This paradox has led some scientists to deem these observations impossible or unreal, but Webb's data is irrefutable. Science must now confront the likelihood that it has been on an incorrect path for over a century, the approximate age of our standard cosmological model. The reality Webb reveals is undeniable. Despite Webb's flawless performance, significant parts of our scientific community struggle to reconcile with the new truths. Resistance from traditionalists against abandoning the Big Bang or the concept of expansion mirrors historical resistance to paradigm shifts. Just as it took years for the Church to accept heliocentrism despite overwhelming evidence, today scientists face a similar reluctance. Although modern researchers are no longer persecuted like Galileo, 
the intellectual resistance and hostility towards groundbreaking discoveries persist. Imagine dedicating your life to a theory only to encounter evidence challenging your beliefs. Such revelations would be difficult for anyone to accept. Thanks to Webb, a revolution has now begun that is currently still causing unrest and heated discussions. But we can rightly hope that the crisis will bring us a little closer to the truth.